Hey guys, so I know I'm a couple days late, but I'm doing a quick video on a few things I got from the Lawn Fawn Hall. So we're using the Bayou Backdrop and the, I don't know what this one's called, Totally Awesome, and the cutouts. Um, I did a lot of stuff ahead of time since I can't really edit yet. So I'll show you what I did and we'll do a couple things together and then we'll put the card together. So I did a lot of distressed ink oxide blending. I did like seven or eight sheets. I'll show you what I got left. I, I mixed with the colors I had. I could have used regular distress ink, but I wanted to use the oxides. So I did some greens and browns. And then I did some blues and then some browns and yellows. Mixed a few greens and blues and browns and yellows. I just kind of was trying to see what colors I could come up with because I didn't want just regular watercolor or regular leaf colors. I wanted stuff that kind of resembled maybe being in a swamp or a bayou because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to put the card together. Got some more greens and blues light greens and then I did a couple purples and blues because of the lilies on the stamp set <clears throat> so I cut a lot of things out of these as you can see some I didn't cut any out of so I cut two different backdrops one in green and one in blue and then I did cut some grass for the backgrounds just in case I needed it just for the regular lawn fawn day I also cut some birch trees out of the birch tree lawn fawn day I'm not sure what that one's called I'll show them to you at the end um, just in case I needed them for the background and then we did a few different colors of water one with mostly blue one with some green and yellow, more blue, and one that had a little bit of everything in it. And when I cut, guys, let me tell you, when I say I cut, I cut. There's a lot of cattails here in different colors. I wasn't sure what I was going to use, what I would need, what color scheme we were going to go with when we did this video. So my past two days, even though I wasn't recording, when I got a chance, when the kids would let me, this is what I was doing. And, I mean, it's 2 o'clock in the morning right now, so you guys know how late I've been staying up. Some different colored grasses and cattail tops. I mean, I'm not going to turn them all over. You get the idea. I mean, I should turn them all over, because how do we know what we got to work with if I don't turn them over, right? It actually looks like one of my kids reached the desk and was playing with quite a few of them. They're like all mixed up upside down in a pile. Okay, sorry if you hear my fans going. It is extremely hot in here tonight. I'm not going to complain though. I've been waiting for it to get warm around here. You know what they say about Buffalo, New York. If you don't like the weather, wait a few minutes. It'll change. Okay. Oh, there's one more. You guys probably can't see me off camera there, but I'm just going to flip them all over and I'm pushing them off to the side there. <coughs> Excuse me. I also stamped out, like, almost everything from the Totally Awesome stamp set. Some frogs. Colored them different colors with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. Um, one of these days when I'm a little bit more confident in my coloring skills and blending skills, maybe I'll do a coloring video, but as of right now, I just colored these up quick with a couple different colors, trying to get some shading going on there. I did some lily pads and some different colors. And then, of course, this set came with uh, cattail stamps. So I had those and cut them out. I also cut a couple of those out of lily pads and cattails out of the Distress Oxide papers. So we're going to stamp those together, hopefully without screwing it up, but we'll see. I cut some out, and then we'll just stamp right over them so they have some of the same colors as the background items. 
I also cut some of the ducks that came in the Bayou Backdrop die cut set out of the yellows and browns. I, didn't, I thought maybe we could use them. I wasn't sure. And then we have some of the lilies that we'll stamp onto from the Distress Oxide. I've got my fan going. And unfortunately, I must have a hole somewhere in my screen. Because now all of a sudden I'm getting bugs all over the place. It's driving me nuts. I also stamped out some logs and colored them with my Spectrum Noir markers. And some lilies. A little bit of everything. Just so you guys get an idea of what I've got to work with here. Alright. Oh, and a couple of dragonflies. Like this cute little guy right here. All right, so let me get move all this stuff aside. I figured with no editing, at least we could put the card together. Oh, one last thing I did, let me move these. After I got all that done, I was thinking, what am I gonna do? Am I going to use the inside cutout from this and then try to piece it back together and raise the frame, which honestly, raising this frame, I mean, you could probably raise the edge but trying to raise these popped up would be a pain in the butt. So I'm not sure about that yet. But anyway, I decided not to try to go with the background that it was cut from. So I took a piece of my Bristol Smooth cardstock. That's what I used for all the distressed ink smushing and blending. And I took a cloud stencil that I actually made from quilting template plastic. I used my Lawn Fawn cloud die and cut it on three sides, the different shapes. And then I used that and just went back and forth with Blueprint Sketch and Salty Ocean Distress Oxide Ink. And then I went over it again, putting lines in with just a regular white pigment ink. I think it was Colorbox. Um, let me check. I'm going to check for you guys. Okay, here it is. Color Crush by Nicole. So an AC Moore pigment ink. I just went over it with white and just lightened everything up a little bit and it kind of blended it in on its own. Okay, so that's how I did that and that's going to be our background which is why I chose that I was probably going to be using the green when we make the card. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is cut this down. And it's just a standard um, hold on, this is super dusty. It's a standard A2 card. Um, I didn't feel yesterday like picking a color card stock that would mostly be covered up anyway. So, I just went with a regular standard uh, pack of A2 size cream colored cards and that's what I'm using for the card base. So I'm going to make this even on both sides. I don't want to have one side cut and one side not. I'm like really weird about that. So if I'm going to cut something down, it's going to be cut on all four sides. It's just the, just the way I roll. So what I'm going to do is right now I'm just making it A2 sized for the base but I actually think I'm going to cut it down like an eighth of an inch on every side so I can center it on the card base and still cover it with the frame with no problem. So that's what we're doing right now. All right, so now it's standard A2. Five and a half, four and a quarter. So we're just gonna take 
maybe not even, maybe an eighth of an inch total and just do a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So I'm going to do a sixteenth of an inch off of each side. And then I'll have, that should be enough room to work with it on the card base without trying to have to make it even on all sides and not have to trim it up later. I mean, don't get me wrong, you could always just trim it. Trim it down after you have the card all done. I find that more of a pain in the butt because sometimes my hand shakes and I can't get the cut straight and then I feel like I've screwed up the whole card. So I usually do not do it like that. So we, I already know that that's going to go flat on, oh, sorry guys, hold on. Okay, excuse me. I'm sure you loved all staring at my head, but those bugs are driving me crazy. Alright, so, see it gives just enough room. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see that, but I scored this card shot, and no matter how hard I tried, I think their score line was crooked. Every card so far I've taken out of this pack has been crooked. So I'm probably going to have to trim it anyway. But that'll give us something to work with. That way, when I put this down, it'll still be covered, but I'm not fighting to make this even on the card stock, or on the card base. So let me grab my tape gun. I'll just use the little one. What's going on with this guy? Ah, oh, looks like somebody was using my tape. Little buggers. Normally, because I cut this down, I would mark or try to ink up the edges so you wouldn't see the white. You know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to do that just because there's going to be at least two layers on this card, not including all the items we're going to add to it. It's just, there's just no need for it. It'll just, whether I mark all the sides up on every single thing I use or not, it's still going to be distracting. So I'll just keep it the way it is. The only thing with this is you want to make sure... You don't have too much of that cream colored base showing, otherwise it's going to be impossible to cover it up with your frame. Alright, I like that. Background might be a little too dark, but that's okay. I mean, I could even technically, we could lighten it up a little bit by doing this. Actually like that guys that looks really pretty see that all right so I'm just gonna dry that real quick I don't want to work with wet paper now because I'm using a heat gun you don't want to keep it on there too long because you'll end up peeling up your tape and buckling your card I don't normally go back and forth. I usually just use the heat gun because it's quicker. And the more stuff I got hanging around my desk, the more stuff my kids have to play with when I'm not in my craft room. So. All right. So now I'm going to see what we like here for the water background. We also got to keep in mind the grass we're going to use. 
Now this one, I'm pretty sure came from the inside of this card, so I'm probably not going to use this just because, I don't know. I kind of like it, but it really does match with the frame too well. I actually like that one. I don't know, something about that one that I like the way it looks. That one matches with the clouds too much. Alright, let's see what we got for grass. Let's try this one. Honestly, this one looks like it matches my water too much. Oh, guys, I don't know. What do you think? Let's try this one. That's not where it's going to go. I'm just trying to look at the colors. That one's not too bad because I can always, can always add in stuff that makes it look different. Honestly, though, I really like that green. But that yellow over in the corner is kind of throwing me off. See? This is why I need to learn how to edit, guys, because I am very, very picky when it comes to actually putting my cards together. When it's something like this, I think I like that. That's what I'm going to do. That's what we're using. Okay. Just going to tape that on. If I don't run out of tape, which I just did. Place this real quick because of course you know that had to be added in there. I don't want the card to be too bulky, so what I'm doing now is trying to figure out where I want to cut that underneath grass. So I think... I'm just going to cut it right here. And I'm also going to trim some of this off since it didn't stick. Let's 
and I don't know if it didn't stick because the kids were playing with the tape or because it was the end of the roll or maybe I didn't dry the splatters enough. I guess we'll find out in a minute. cut this one right there just because that's where the grass really ends anyway and I'm gonna clean these up real quick so they don't end up stuck to my card I should probably just move my garbage bag over by my desk you guys probably can't hear me even as I'm walking away to the garbage can I should probably just move it over Oh, I'm ruining my desk. Hold on, guys. Sorry. See, that looks like crap, but don't forget that it'll be covered up. I'm just going to trim that little edge off. So now we're going to start building our scene. We need to decide how much water we want showing. Um, if we want to use logs. Oh, guys, before we go any further, we got to do some of the stamping. I forgot. This should be fun. I'm probably going to do it in Versafine. Oh no, you know what? I might end up spraying it again, so maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe we'll just do it in Memento Black, Tuxedo Black. I really want to try, I want to get some long, fun black ink. I really want to try that. And some Simon Says Stamp Black. I haven't tried either of those black inks yet. See, we'll do the log first. You could probably make it even more personalized. I have all these, um, hold on a second, one second. drop inks from memento and they would be perfect for this always looking for a reason to use new things or things I don't get to use that often alright alright let's see if we can do this excuse my head Not perfect, but don't look bad, guys. Hold on, let me get the other one stamped and I will show you. I suggest that if you wanted to go over your stamping more than once, you use something like a Misty tool. Unless you're brave. I'm not brave. I know I cannot re-stamp in the same spot. I've tried. It does not work. I'm 
Okay. So it really wasn't half bad idea doing these. Excuse the ink on my hands. That's from yesterday. No matter how much I washed it. Those look pretty cool. Alright, let's do the other ones and get a move on here. We don't make this video too long for you guys. I'm really, I want to apologize too about stopping to clean my stuff. If I don't, I forget and then my stuff, you know, got to take care of your stuff. It's not cheap, right? So that's why you guys see me disappear for a minute off camera. Usually I'm cleaning whatever I've used. All right, let's do the lily pads. I have two different colors of green here. I think I have more in there, but I think we're gonna try this first. That one I kind of overshot. That one don't look half bad. All right, there's only two of those. I'm just wiping them off with water right now. I'll go back with my stamp cleaner later. Just wanted to do it quick. Just in case I do forget, at least they were mostly washed off. Okay, two little, little lily pads. I think I want to go for a different green. Hold on, guys. Now we've got some Long Fawn Ink Cube and a Simon Says Stamp Hybrid Ink Cube. We're gonna try both of those. Oh, sorry guys. Eh, you can barely see that one. I don't know if I'm impressed with the, at least on the Distress Oxide. I haven't used that since the Wild Things kit last year. Oh, I put it away and I still need it. I noticed Long Fawn has a lot of pretty colors of ink that I would really love, love, love to get. I don't know how bad your guys' craft drawers and stuff are, but you should see some of the drawers and the cubes of ink from just from kits and stuff that I have that I barely use. And I'd like to use more of. I mean, there's colored ink for a reason, right guys? Experiment, experiment. All right, we've got a couple flowers here. Oh, some blue ones too. I gotta go find a blue ink. Sorry, I really thought I was more prepared, had everything around me for this video, guys. I'm really sorry. That's cute. I like that one. Alright. 
Oh, blue. I did purple and pink. It's blue and pink. Oh my god. I'm such a doofus. Alright, let's put these back. Keep that. No, keep that one out. It's a little off center, but like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you know what it is. I mean, there was a reason I wanted to do it on distress oxide paper or colored paper. small guy and try the mermaid this one might be a little tougher huh and then he comes out almost perfect some green and I still have the brown out. It just gives you some different options. You know, you got the stamped alcohol colored ones, alcohol ink colored ones, or alcohol marker, and then distress oxide with an outline. I mean, I think it gives it a different look. All right, let's get these cattails and grass done. Grass first. I think I have just the one. Everything else was colored with marker for the grass. I'll try celery stick. These are going to be a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over them with light green. What I'm going to do with these, I think I'm going to do light green on the stem. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just tapping it on. And then I'm going to take the darker green. Just feel like messing around. And just hitting a couple spots on the green. And then I'll do the cattail with the, the top with brown. We'll see how that turns out. Oh, I like that, guys. Hold on, and I'll show you the result. the other one real quick. I'm going to do the same exact thing. And even threw a little in on the top there. That's the nice thing about the small cubes. You can mess around any way you want. Not have to worry about ruining a whole cube or a whole pad of ink. Not like it would really be ruined unless you did something 
drastic. All right, let's see what we got here. Aren't those cool? I think they really look cool. All right. So, let's just place this here. Decide where everything's going. That tape on that one is not sticking. I'm gonna have to tape glue that down, I think. I think that one blends too much with the grass, so I'm actually going to go with a alcohol marker colored one. And then We're gonna pick out our frogs. And put a little guy on here. I think he's a little too big. You know what, guys? I'm having a really hard time holding this stuff down here. And I'll put some marks around him so you can tell he's jumping. I gotta get this glued down. It's driving me bananas, at least the bottom of it, so I know where everything's going. So first things first, I'm going to fix this. I'm just gonna use my glue pen, my Zig glue pen. Hold it down for a minute. Let's put a block on that real quick. While we're waiting for that to dry, I think this is actually going to be popped up. So I'm going to put the tape just around the outside edge of this real quick. What I would really love is if I had some of those, yes I do, I wonder if it's enough, those strips that came in the kit a few months back. I think it was the summer kit with the bathing suits. You guys know what I'm talking about, the Simon Says Stamp Kit. Excuse me. Uh oh. Alright, let's do it like this. This is probably the easier way to do it so there's no gaps. <coughs> so I'll fill in that little gap in a minute after I go around. See what I mean, guys? Reaching all the way across my desk for something the kids touched. Actually, let's just go fix it right now.
to buy some more of these guys. They really do come in handy, these thin little strips. I love them to death. All right, there we go. And this should be dry. And you see how I centered that just in case? I left just enough on the edges in case I have to trim it when I put it on the card base. Now tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, I want to work on the card for my cousin's wedding, which will be from the June card kit. I know I didn't do the May card kit yet. Um... But I will get to it. But I want to really want to use the flower set from the June card kit and try something I saw on another channel, which I will tell you about when we're doing the card in the next video. But it really, I fell in love with it, and it's something I really want to try. So see that kind of looks like it's not enough water to me. So we're going to push it up a little. Alright. And I'm just going to straighten it out a little. Because I don't know. I'm going to be anal about the water now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little line. So that I know when I glue it down that that's where it's going. Just a little pencil line. I mean, it's so light you can barely see it. And I'm not going to glue the whole thing down yet. I think I'm going to do just the bottom edge. So I can tuck stuff behind it. I mean, you'd probably be able to peel it up. Well, you definitely would be able to peel it up if you waited for it to be the wet, dry, sticky glue, which I am not going to do. I mean, you could still peel it up, but you'd have to be real careful that you're not ruining your... And now I can't figure out how I want to put it back on, guys. I'm such a ditz. Let that dry. Damn bugs, I'm telling you. Sorry, didn't mean to swear. Frustrated. Extremely frustrated. Just put my inks back, guys. Trying to start really getting this card together, seeing what we're going to do, because I'm trying to keep this thing, I wanted to keep it under 45 minutes, but it looks like it's going to be under an hour. Maybe we should put this on the other side, since the log's going over there. I'm sorry. I have a habit of talking to myself, so I'm talking really low, when I should be talking to you guys. So let's just see what we can figure out. So that's going to go there, and that's going to go there. Alright. No changing. No going back now, guys. No going back now. I think we're just going to glue all this stuff down. It seems like it's the easier way to go. And to make sure it sticks to the Distress ink. 
which for some reason I'm having a hard time with today. Just make sure you're comfortable with whatever medium you're using, you know, your glue, your tape, whatever is going to work for you. I have no, my preference usually is a tape runner. I'm not a glue girl unless I feel something needs it or I need that sticky glue, the zig marker for some reason. But sometimes I have to admit, wet glue comes in handy. So now we got the glue on the tree. So the camping trip was awesome. Um, well, awesome to spend time together. But it was some place we've never been to before. We usually go to Allegheny State Park in New York State. And they were booked because it was my idea to go camping last minute. My brilliant idea. And so we tried something new. There was a place called Chapman State Park in Pennsylvania. And it was two hours away from us. We usually drive an hour and a half to Allegheny anyway. So I was like, what the heck? It's worth a try. And it was a very pretty little state park. But that's what it seemed like to me. Like it was very small. Little did I know that the only reason we got a campsite at that state park was because their beach is closed for a year to meet. They did not meet safety standards, so they're redoing the beach and the lake and all that. So that was a little disappointing, especially considering they I only saw like one or two hiking trails and a couple of playgrounds for the kids, and that was basically it. There was nothing else for the kids to do. Um, but it was a cute little place. Um, we had a lot of fun. Set up tents. Let me, don't get me wrong, last minute. Don't ever do it last minute. I usually am so planned. I'm a planned person. I have a list, all of that. And I couldn't find the normal list that I fall back on. And we just kind of winged it. And last year we never put the poles back into the tent when we brought it home and aired it out. Um, actually our tent for myself my fiance and our son we had the kids tent but we did not have our tent well we had our tent we just didn't have any poles so it was either drive two hours home and two hours back to get the poles or go buy a new tent at the Walmart in Warren so it took them an hour to get to Walmart and back and I have to say guys Give your man props when he picks, picks the easiest tent ever to be assembled. When he pulled back into that campsite, I was like, oh, it's 1130. I do not want to be putting up a tent right now. And he bought it. Get this, guys. He bought it because it had built-in LED lights. They ran through the top of the tent and into a battery pack. And you push the button and there's four different levels of brightness. Okay. Gotta love men. That's why he bought the tent. He opens up the bag, and I'm like, where are the poles? Please tell me there's poles in this bag. Here I am thinking, that's our luck. Buy a tent that somebody returned, and there's no poles in this one either. Nope, they were hooked right to the center. And it popped up. Like, you opened it up, and the poles fell into place, and you extended the legs hammered in the stakes and voila you had yourself a tent that you only had to put the rain tarp on i looked at him and said i gotta give you props for the easiest tent ever i was so incredibly happy so even though we spent another hundred dollars on a new tent i have to say the one the kids sleep in now we've had it since we've been together so 14 years we definitely got our money's worth out of that tent and it is literally falling apart 
So now that new tent that we had to buy last minute will become the kids' new tent the next time we go camping. And we will remember the poles for our tent. Because, no offense, I got nothing against LED lights. They actually came in handy. But my tent's better. I like my tent. I like that you, I can stand up in my tent. I like that I can sweep the floor of my tent without stooping over. I like that I can fit an air mattress and all the suitcases or bags of clothes and a playpen in there. So I want my tent. But it was a good time. I'm off rambling here. It was a pretty little park. I think if you lived near it, it would be something that, I mean, fisher people who fish probably go there. It's right, it's adjacent, which is one of the reasons I picked it. It's adjacent to the Allegheny Forest that runs into PA and also to their state game land. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that go up there when they go hunting. Um, the rules are very different in PA, I found out. You cannot drink at all in a state park. Not that we brought any. We very rarely, except on adult camping week, adult camping weekends, bring any kind of alcohol. But I just thought it was funny when I was reading the rules and regulations, the Pennsylvania laws compared to the New York State laws. I mean, no alcohol at all. If you get caught with alcohol, you can get kicked out of the park. Um, there. What else? A quiet time was at 9. You could only park one car at your site. Um, we actually had a site that was capable of holding two cars on the gravel, you know, driveway part. So we were able to park both our vehicles, but we had to pay five extra dollars a night to be able to do that. So that was a little upsetting. So 15 bucks I had to pay just so we could use or keep our car convenience because we have so many kids keep both cars at the site otherwise we had to would have had to walk down to the second car parking to get the other car every time we wanted to go somewhere so all right i'm just trying to place things here see where i want them see how they look Got a couple smaller cattails, a couple larger cattails. I'm just trying to see how I want it all to go because I like that so that's gonna go on the edge at the very end all right so we just need a couple lily pads these got to come off for a minute I think I'm actually gonna trim I know it's a sin sometimes this border that the die cuts give you just bothers the heck out of me I just hope that me trimming it down like this does not what do I want to say does not make me think I got to trim it off of everything I already put on there because really I do not want to take this card apart just to trim off some white edging usually I don't do this especially if I'm in a hurry because I am a horrible trimmer and I can't it's hard for me not to cut into the line and then I end up using a marker to edge it up which you know gives it a finished look anyway but takes more time it all it all that time adds up guys I mean look 55 minutes we're at already which is why I really need to learn or find a program that will give me editing on my phone with no problem or even editing on my computer for my phone I don't have I mean I have a video camera but I never I don't know if I could use a memory card to make videos I've never used it for that before I've always had those little mini DVR discs that only hold like a half hour of time and I don't know if that's enough time really to you know to have for a video 
just gonna edge these up real quick. Almost time for my son to come home from the Ukraine. I'm so excited. My oldest son is over there with the National Guard and he's been over there since he left November 1st, but he was in Texas for a month before that. So I haven't seen him. Well, technically I haven't seen him since March because he came home for a two week leave. But he left in September. And now he finally gets to come home July 21st. Well, he leaves the Ukraine July 21st. And then he has to go to Texas for like a month or something. Between home and the Ukraine. Alright, so now... I'm going to put a couple flowers on there. Let's just glue these on real quick. If I had the name of staple, like an adhesive staple that I always have to have in my craft room, it would be tape runner number one and zig two way glue pens, both sizes for the second one. I love those things. Love, love, love. So I haven't had any visitors lately. When it was starting to get starting, just starting to get warm out, I was getting a possum around the house constantly. And he was eating my cat's food. So I had to start bringing the food in at night because the one night, I mean, I felt bad for the possum and I was actually letting it eat the cat food because they're normally pregnant around that time. But he got way too used to coming and knowing exactly where the food was. And then I look out the window, window one night and what do I see? The fattest raccoon I have ever seen in my entire life, even camping. This raccoon was fat and it was sitting on my patio right outside the stairs to the patio door. And it picked up the bowl that I had the cat food in and it flipped it over in its hand to look inside of it and it was upside down because the possum had accidentally knocked it over on itself he picked it up actually flipped it in his hands I've never seen a raccoon do that before noticed it was empty threw it on the ground and walked away it was I was like alright that's enough of that no more feeding the wildlife but I have to tell you it's about time I start seeing some wildlife around here you know we don't live in the city anymore and I swear, I always told people, I see more wildlife in the city than I've ever seen out here. And we're not, it's not like we're the country, but we're definitely not in the city anymore. Um, when we first moved in, I used to see turkeys all the time. All the time. Over in the neighbor's yard. We only have one neighbor next door to us. And uh, they would come out every morning and eat right on the edge of his property line. And then this winter, I hadn't seen the turkeys in ages, and we've been here almost four years now. This winter, this past winter, there was a heavy snow, and we went out to um, snow blow, and there were some giant turkey tracks going across the driveway into his property. They were as big as my hands. I mean, I don't have huge hands, but these were some big footprints. I never saw the turkey though. All right, so we gotta decide while that, I'm gonna let that glue dry for just a couple seconds, decide where we're gonna put these little flowers. I tried to do a couple different mixes of color, but I pretty much stuck to pink and purple. Right, guys where did I have these I forgot one here covering him 
Get out of here, bug. Goodness, I can't get them up with my fingers all of a sudden. Alright, I think we'll do go with that. Don't want to overdo it. I mean, it's not like the card looks crowded. It really doesn't. But every... I mean, it's not like I used thin. I should have. I should have thought about it. But I really couldn't, though. The paper thickness makes a difference so every layer that I'm adding to this card is adding to the thickness of the card so in hindsight if you're gonna make this card the way I made it think about using thinner paper although with the distress oxide I mean I guess I could have used anything but I really like the way the Bristol smooth blends um, but like I said, you really could use anything. You don't have to use Bristol Smooth, and that would really, really help with the thickness of the layers we're building up here. All right, let's let these dry for a minute. We're almost done, guys. I hit over an hour, but I'm hoping to end it soon. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to spend tons and tons of time. I could spend all day with you guys. But I'm sure you don't want to sit here watching me ramble on for an hour while a card barely gets made. You're on here to see what I'm doing, right? All right. All right, so this is going to be one of the last steps. Let's put these cattails on there. I think he's gonna go right there except I might pop him up so we're just gonna leave him be for now since the edge is popped up I can have a couple things popping up actually should I pop these suckers up too no hmm. I don't know guys I think I'll just pop up the frog and maybe the sentiment that'll make a statement stay I should have got my tweezers out too much glue. Just all came out of the pen all of a sudden. Alright. I should be using my stupid tweezers. Where did I put them? Alright. So once again, I showed you all this stuff that I cut out in preparation. I mean, I can make more cards, but I way overdid it. I probably could have had this video out yesterday or the day before. And it just makes me feel like a fool because I already have you guys waiting so often as it is. You know, that I, I don't want to keep making you guys wait. It's, this doesn't seem right and I'm definitely not going to keep my followers and my subscribers. I'm trying to fix it so that, you know, everybody's happy. This, I'm going to be very careful with. I'm just going to use this little pen here. I'm just gonna put some glue on the grass and every spoke because that's all I really want there anyway that way I don't waste a lot of glue and it doesn't get all super sticky when I trim it I'll spread that out a little bit
also, I would love to see comments on what you guys did for Memorial Day weekend. I know not everybody does some, but usually there's at least a picnic you can go to. My family used to do all that stuff and not so much anymore, and especially with my cousin's wedding coming up, there's just so much going on. My mom was in the hospital too, so I didn't really do anything special. She did text me while I was up at camp, and she's like, I could really really go for a hot dog and some potato salad today and I was like sorry mom I had macaroni salad and it's all gone I felt so bad <laughs> she's home now though I'm sure she had her hot dog and potato salad we want to make sure that this glue has some place to go but we also want to make sure we don't cover up everything That guy dry for a minute. Oh, guys, I think what I'm gonna do is save this stuff. Just fold up one of these crooked A2 card bases from the package I bought and just put all these cut-ups that I cut up in there in case I want to make some more of these cards just while I'm waiting for that glue to dry. Oh, and we have to decide what sentiment we're going to use also. I guess the easiest way to do this is to just slide it under my glass media mat and slide it on in. Alright. Sentiments. Congrats on your new pad. We've moved to a new pad. I have a happy birthday. Happy, have a happy Father's Day. Maybe we should make this a Father's Day card since Father's Day is coming up. Have a happy Father's Day. We're going to do that because Lord knows my kids will love giving him a Father's Day card. And actually, with this wedding on my mind, I totally, I mean, he already got his gift because I, ironically, the wedding is on Father's Day. And he might not be able to go. So I already gave him his Father's Day gift. But I did not make his card yet. And honestly, it just slipped my mind. I didn't even think about what I was going to make him. So, and I've been making him his cards ever since I started doing this and I told you guys I've only been doing this for about a year and a half I was always into other crafts and I never really did paper crafts much and actually remind me another time another video with a comment and I will tell you exactly how I got into paper crafting just trying to make it straight or kind of straight because with this little crazy font you could kind of do whatever you wanted with it curve it make it a little crooked offset it a little bit but I think because this also has an explanation point I'm not gonna do the offsetting Father's Day and then an exclamation point See that? Okay. All right, let's see if this can be trimmed yet. Move that guy. Man, it is so sticky on the top. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get rid of that. From pushing down on it when it was still wet, I should have just waited till it was tacky. We can learn together, guys. We can learn from my mistakes together. It's okay. I got this. So, as hot as it is here right now, I still 
wish I was in Myrtle Beach. I love that place. We've been going there so long now, and I still have family that lives there, and I just, every time I leave, I feel like I've left my home. I feel homesick. It's depressing. It's quite depressing sometimes, actually. And I am just have never been one for cold weather and never will be one for cold weather. I could care less about snow, sledding, snowball fights, skiing, None of that stuff appeals to me in the slightest. You give me a bucket and a book and a pair of shorts, I don't even need a bathing suit, and I will spend my life on the beach. Maybe a blanket in case I gotta sleep there. I just, I, it's where I was meant to be, people. I was meant to be on a beach, for sure. All right, so I got that grass on there. It's starting to come together now. We've got that sky, looks a little empty, but we're gonna put this guy right here there, but I'm gonna pop him up after. Um, but before I put this on, actually I should probably pop him up now because he needs some of those side marks. So we gotta do that as well. So he looks like he's jumping. So we're gonna use this guy right here. Put the sentiment right there somewhere. So he's gonna go right there. Doesn't have to be super dark, just something to let them know that this guy's hopping. If you do it before you tack them down, then you can move them where you like if he doesn't exactly match up to your little jumpy parentheses. You like that word, right? Jumpy parentheses? I made that up. That is trademarked. Jumpy parentheses. Right, let's see here. Man, I gotta figure out a dust system. This desk, I love this desk I got this year. But it collects dust, and maybe it's just the kitchen and all the electronics I have out here for my craft room too, because I told you my craft room's in the kitchen and it's super huge kitchen, so whatever. Anyway, maybe it's just that this room in particular attracts dust, I, I don't know. But it just, the dust problem sometimes on my items. It seems to only be on my craft items, of course. Mm -hmm. it just seems absolutely ridiculous. I feel like he should have maybe a little strip there for his arms. His poor little arms are going to be floppy if I don't. Just a tiny little square on his little foot. And I usually, for fair warning, always overdo it with pop-up 3D foam tape and stuff. I'm always an overachiever when it comes to that. I'm always using too much. I don't know why. Maybe it's, I just don't want to make sure, I want to make sure nothing moves. I want to make sure everything pops up where it's supposed to and doesn't get smushed down. Same thing with my coloring sometimes. That's why I'm not that confident about it. Sometimes I just don't know when to say enough is enough. Although I hope well, I hope I know when to say no tomorrow's for tomorrow's video because the video that I saw requires some coloring. So I guess we'll soon find out. Alright. Mr. Hoppy's on there. And now, see these leaves are going to pose a bit of a problem. Maybe. What do you 
think, guys. Maybe just a flat piece across there, because here's the thing. These aren't going to be propped up, maybe in a couple spots, but... And there's already too much stuff down here, unless I totally cover a section up. Unless I try to place it around him, and then you're talking about trying to ink around something that's already popped up. All right, why don't we do this? I'm gonna pick all these pieces up, slide them into here like I said. extra pieces. Alrighty. God, I cut enough pieces for like maybe 18,000 cards, guys. No, not that many. Probably like six. Six cards, maybe. I'd have to cut some more frogs, though. That, I think, would be... I only did two sets of the frogs. Alright, so that stuff's picked up and out of the way. Alright, so we're going to take... had some cardstock here for making, you know, perfect for making little banners. Like actually, I can use this. Alright, we're going to use this. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to do it like this, and then I think we're going to try to do it straight across. Alright. We're going to use Versifying, and we're going to use Embossing Powder. We're going to use the Nouveau Fine Detail Black Embossing Powder. Actually, I'm going to do this on the opposite side of the fan. That would probably not be a good idea. Maybe I should just even turn that off for a minute. You know, I had a embossing body bag but I made it myself, didn't like it, bought this, but now I think I want the bag back because these little hairs get stuck and they fall all over the place and they get broken and it just doesn't seem like it works once it gets like that. You guys have to tell me what you think. What kind of embossing buddy do you prefer? Let me know. This doesn't work with this black. I'm going to use clear just so you guys know. Are you serious right now? All right, 
Let's see. Sorry, I know I'm off camera, but I don't want to blow that around with my heat gun. See, like this, guys. This is something I've noticed with the Nouveau embossing powder, especially the fine detail. You see those black marks? But even with the embossing body and using the paintbrush, I can see streaks of black. Hold on one second. Can you see them? There, you can see it there. And I don't know how to get that off. I mean, does everybody have that problem? It's everywhere. I tried using an eraser on it. I think we're gonna put this away and use clear just for the purpose of finishing this video up and then I'll try another day to figure out why that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> why that black gives me such a hard time. All right, so now we've got some Ranger clear gloss. Let's try this again. This one I'm going to do on this side just because I still have to do the other way straight across. Make sure I have enough room. Crap, every time I think I'm ready I find I've forgotten something. Here we go. Alright. That don't look half bad. tape before I get embossing powder on it. Alright, now we're going to straighten this out. I'm just going to wipe it off so I don't get ink all over my hands. God, guys, we're hitting an hour and a half. Tell me, please, what you think I can do to make these videos shorter. You can always fast forward. Uh, I'm just... I just want to do what it takes to make you guys happy, you know, so you guys stay watching my channel. I don't know why I have such a hard time. It's like anything I want to do, I always have bad luck. I mean, granted, I haven't really had that much time to look into an editing program, plus money, but I gotta try. I gotta. All right, what we're gonna do is, obviously this block doesn't fit it, but if I put it on a bigger block, it's gonna, it's gonna be hard to stamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna heat emboss it, and then I'm gonna do the other part. Just cause I don't feel like messing with a big, huge, um, acrylic block. Plus, I know I'm still new with this. I'm still getting used to this. I'm sure there's things I could cut. I tried to prepare, like I told you guys, but with the no editing, 
just trying to figure out other things I can do to make the videos go a little bit quicker. I don't want you guys to get bored. I mean, some people like seeing the whole process. Some people don't. I guess it's all a matter of personal preference. pissed at that oh my god I'm swearing again I'm sorry guys I just smudge it by accident and there's no way I'm making you guys sit through another sentiment so we're just gonna have to deal with it hopefully it doesn't look too off key with the font it don't look that bad some room so I can get the trimmer out. We're going to be wrapping this video up in a minute. And you guys will have it to watch tomorrow morning. A couple days late, but at least you had it this week. And the week I'm having, that's a good thing. I also forgot to tell you guys, I had a couple, I'm not sure if I'm going to put them on there yet, but we got a couple dragonflies with little trails if we decide to use them. So, there's always that option too. And I just put that whole stamp set away and I forgot to put these stamps back. So I'll just do that after. All right. not going to be perfect. I actually played with the idea of cutting it crooked because of the words wobbly, but I'm not going to do that. So we got this one, which I can trim down. Goodness, I drive myself nuts. All right. It's a little crooked. I'm gonna have to trim that up. And that's why you should probably measure out your banner before you stamp, even though sometimes you can end up stamping crooked. Cause I used a scrap piece of paper and now because of the way it was cut last time, my sentiment is kind of crooked. But 
we're gonna deal guys because we're running into no, we're at an hour and a half right now but actually I think I kind of looked the way that looks so let's see Sometimes I can do this perfect when I wing it. Sometimes I cut it incredibly crooked. Sometimes I do not have a good eye when it comes to cutting things straight. All right. And then if we decided to use this one. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to stick this sucker down first. I know that we probably shouldn't, but and then we'll see where the sentiments fit best. And actually I'm going to wrap up this video while we're doing it so you guys don't have extra time you got to sit through. I'm loving that you guys are commenting more. It makes my day when I go onto YouTube and I see that people have commented. Like I said, this summer I want to start doing monthly giveaways so push that notification button guys so you know when I'm doing a giveaway watch my videos hit that thumb if you like what you see and if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see please subscribe the more the merrier I appreciate everything I appreciate you guys subscribing taking the time to watch it's something I really wanted to make a go of. And eventually we will get all, everything all smoothed out. Editing, learning how to make videos shorter so people can watch them, all of that. And some maybe make some, get some requests on things you guys would like to see or tutorials if I know how to do it. Don't forget, tomorrow or the next day I'm gonna be doing the video for the wedding card which will have the big flower, beautiful, Day flower, I think it's called, from the Simon Says Stamp June Kit. Excuse my head, guys. Alright, guys. Like I said, I knew that card base was a little crooked. You can see it right here. See it? Otherwise, it doesn't look half bad. I hate that you can see the phone tape, but oh well, we're dealing with it today. All right, so we could do this. We actually, we could put it right on the frame. And if that was the case, you could use a strip of the Distress Oxide for future reference so that at least but I think I you know what I can at least color this we're gonna do that real quick just so it has some type of color to it now it's not stark white against that frame but then we can just pop it right on the frame flat to the frame no more popping up there's too much bulk to the card already. So I'm just going over the edges and then I'll color the whole thing. Probably not a good way to use your alcohol markers. Don't want to ruin the nub or the nib, the nub. Oh my God, I'm losing my vocabulary as I get older guys, I swear. I'm just going to color right over the words and everything. Just a quick color. 
just to give it some color. Like I said, it's gonna be glued flat to the edge of the frame, the Bayou backdrop frame, so. I didn't want it to be white. It just didn't belong. It, you know what, the, it, to me, the white on this sentiment brings out the edging around the die cuts, which I really don't want to do. So I would rather it blend in more with the frame than the edges. All right. And I'm just wiping off my embossed letters. Alright, so you see I decided not to use this one. I'll just save that with the extra pieces. Let's stick to the trusty old glue pen again. Try not to use too much glue. I want it to stick, but I don't want it to be sticky like when I put the grass down on the bottom. I'm getting tired, so now my hand's starting to shake. Ooh, and then I hit you. Headbutt, you guys. That's not good. All right. All right, it's on there. I'm just going to set a block on it real quick. And we're going to clean up our work surface. Garbage. I'll show you guys real quick what I'm talking about for tomorrow's card. Bet you those bugs have never been uh, hand sanitized before. Be gone, bugs. If you guys have any questions about what I used on this card, any die cuts, anything else, where I got them, let me know. I do plan on eventually making a list of everything I used with links, but you know, that comes along with editing and stuff. All right, so that's what the card looks like. Like I said, this card's a little crooked. I'm not gonna mess with it tonight. I will straighten it out tomorrow, but. It's done for your guys' purposes. Your guys', my goodness, like I said, my vocabulary. I think I am gonna glue a couple of these on here before we go. Can't get any worse, right? We're already at a minute, or an hour, 38 minutes. I'm so sorry, guys. Please feel free to forward through. Let me know if it's just way too long for you to even bother forwarding through. I mean, if it is, I'll try to figure out a different way to do it. I'm kind of slow when it comes to making my cards. I don't know why, I'm just picky. And it just, I don't know. I take a while to decide things. Even when I seem, I feel like I've planned out the card, I feel like I'm picky. So I think what I might start doing is making a card ahead of time and then doing a card with you guys that way then I already know basically what I'm doing. I mean, technically, if there wasn't so much on this card, you could put these in here. I'm not going to. I'm not messing with it. So here you go. Here's today's card using the Lawn Fawn Paiu Backdrop and the totally awesome stamp set and die cut kit. And I really like the way it turned out, and I like that I didn't pop these up because they look like they're, you know, they, they're moving. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you did this card. Show me what it looks like if you want. Thank you so much, guys. Like this video. Don't forget to hit the notification button and the subscribe button. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.